When you look at Australia from an outside perspective, you'd think, oh, developing a wind farm here is easy. Until you do it. We share the planet with every other species. And so if we're going to be sensible custodians of our natural heritage and children's future, then we need to do something about carbon dioxide pollution. Wind energy is a fundamentally important part of that. When I was a student back in Germany, there was a lot of controversy around the use of nuclear power. And just protesting against something doesn't cut it. You need to become part of the solution. And so when I then did wind energy courses as part of my degree, and it really fascinated me. I had the opportunity to get involved in wind farms. And I could see that was the trend for the future, responsible thing to do, and also a very rewarding thing to do on a personal level. In 2004, we started uh, the development process on the Mount Mercer wind farm up the road from the Golden Plains wind farm. And we were probably about six to 12 months in the development process when some of the landholders at Golden Plains approached us. And they said, would you be interested in looking at our land as well? We're currently in a position in agriculture at present where the cattle market has dropped, the wool market has dropped, and you have to look at alternatives. Climate change is massive for everybody, but farmers it's probably next level because we actually try and make a living off the climate. We have to change with it or find ways to slow the change down. Technology has started to move on. We started to see bigger wind turbines and we realised if we had more turbines, then the cost to connect into the big transmission line here, it might be possible to do that. 500 kV line is a high capacity power line that connects Melbourne down with the Portland smelter. It was built back in the 80s. And now it has the new lease on life and bringing power this way over to the city from the natural resources of wind. The project will contribute 9% of Victoria's energy use once it's complete. And to put that in context, the 9% is about 2% of Australia's overall generation. It would be immensely helpful if the planning process was more streamlined. Back in 2014, we just could not get any of our wind projects permitted at the time, including what we were doing here, we just couldn't move forward. As a developer, we're not an expert in ecology. We understand there is ecological impacts. What we do is we hire experts that understand and are trained in the conservation of species. We've been involved in the Golden Plains Wind Farm Project since 2016, assisting them to comply with the biodiversity regulations that are put in place to protect the wildlife and the ecosystems that we so value. The brolga is one of Victoria's most threatened birds. There's somewhere between 650 and 800 left in the state. They're particularly concentrated in southwestern Victoria, where the Golden Plains wind farm is also located. There were probably thousands of brolgas once across the wetland areas of Victoria, but because Victoria is so intensely settled and so intensely farmed and developed, a lot of the wetlands have been drained and now the brolga is confined mostly to this southwestern corner of the state. Therefore, the conservation and protection of the species in the state depends on managing the impacts of development and working with farmers and others to protect wetland habitats such as this. We need to prepare a broad compensation management plan. It's a commitment by the project to mitigate all of the potential impacts that the wind farm might have on the broad community. And that's a super important obligation that we take really seriously. Government guidelines set an objective of zero net loss from the Victorian Brolga population. So a Brolga compensation plan then becomes a condition of a project's approval. It's rolled out to increase the availability of habitat for breeding Brolgas by managing, hopefully, fox predation. You also maximise the chances of breeding success and for new chicks and new individuals to be added to the population. The original layout was a 228 turbine layout but came with a restriction on turbines in what's known as the Brolga breeding area. In that Brolga breeding area was approximately 60 turbines that were required to be relocated as part of the planning approval. 
the most effective way that you can avoid a wind farm or wind turbines having an impact on flying wildlife such as birds and bats is not to put turbines in the wrong place to begin with. Um, so turbine-free buffers that encompass sensitive habitats is a good model for managing the impacts of wind farms on biodiversity. I like to look at it in a, a macro and a micro view. At a macro level, we've got climate change. And at a micro level, we've got the, the local ecosystem where projects are being built. And I think it's about striking the balance between both of those two items. We need to make sure that we're delivering on big projects so that we can have a big impact on the macro issues. But we also need to make sure that we're looking after the micro issues where each of the projects have been located. Without stronger government regulation, with more detailed guidelines, species by species, we're not going to halt the extinction crisis. And that sits firmly in the hands of government. So I grew up in Rokewood and I moved away when I was 18. Coming back, working on the project, I have to say it probably wasn't something that I ever thought I'd do. It's led me to looking at the community grow and be enhanced from all the great benefits that Golden Plains Wind Farm is having. It's quite special to talk to some of the community members over the years and see some of the great impacts. I've been very impressed with the, uh, the way that uh, TAG and, and West Wind have uh, tried to bring all the community on board. It was made very clear that it's not their project, it's not the farmer's project. If the community aren't on board, then there is no project. We had ownership of the program to a certain extent, or to a big extent, and that was important to us. That money allows us to do the work on the native grasslands. It allows us to manage the wetlands better. We negotiated with West Wind about a community fund that would be set up, and that's an enormous benefit for the small country towns such as Rokewood. As farmers, we couldn't ask for any more. The thing I'm probably most excited about is that we've got a community group happening to try and come up with some good ideas, suggestions for the funds for the future. At the end of the day, we need employment, we need more businesses, so the more businesses that we can attract to a smaller town, the more vibrant the community is overall. Any farmer is only the custodian while you're doing your bit. I, you know, I'm living in the house my grandfather built. But in the end, we're trying to have it in good heart for the next generation. Having wind farms is part of that. Uh, it's really important that we move from fossil fuels. The science has been really well established that fossil fuels have been a productive and useful form of energy to advance the world over the last 100 years but we've now seen the impact of that on the climate, on fellow species that live here on Earth. But more importantly, before they run out, they're gonna destroy a lot of the ecosystems that we all love to enjoy. In an ideal world, Australia would have planned its transition away from fossil fuels much earlier. What we're faced with now is the rapid closure over the next decade of major coal-fired power stations without any preparation really having been done. And a mad rush, therefore, to fill the generating capacity with renewable energy. And so there's a huge pressure on at the moment to get wind farms in there, otherwise we face blackouts. It's important that we look after nature because nature looks after us. I think it's pretty clear that uh, climate change is real and uh, it's up to all of us to do something while we can. Renewable energies make sense. We really put the emphasis on our grandchildren, the future of our grandchildren and their ability to be able to do what we've done in our lifetime. Globally, it's significant. It'll be the largest wind farm in the Southern Hemisphere, a record that we probably will only hold for a couple of years. Actually, we really hope that others do beat us on that endeavor because it's good for the planet. I think the renewable energy industry now has a really big challenge at its hand, having gone for quite some time in order to achieve what we now set out to achieve. We have to go a lot harder, we have to do a lot more. And that means it's not just the renewable energy industry that need to contribute, it's the regulators, it's government. It is a huge societal effort. And I'm excited working in the renewable energy industry. Uh, I think it's a necessity that we exploit renewables to protect planet for our future generations. In 30 years time we won't be wondering if it was a good or a bad thing to do. We'll be doing it again and again in perpetuity because the wind will always be there. <laughs>